Hi there, I hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to a special episode because I'll be talking about five pairs of shoes all in this one video. Some of them are ones that I've been asked a lot about in the comments, but I have yet to do a video on them. So here they are. I put five pairs of Li Ning shoes together here. And I can tell you now that not a single one of these disappointed performance wise. But I think it's more important to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each shoe, what types of playing styles or foot shapes these cater to. And in the end, I'll compare them all together. If you like this type of videos, like a performance compilation kind of thing, uh, please let me know by dropping a like or comment down below what other shoes that I haven't talked about but you want to see in one of these videos. As always, I'll do my best to get them. It can be a much older release too. Uh, let's get right into this one because we got a lot of good stuff to talk about here. Uh, we'll start with an appetizer and that is the Speed 9 Ultra. Yeah, that's right. These are basically the big brother of the Speed 9 Premium. Those were already a solid shoe that I think is particularly good for guards. But the Speed 9 Ultra is a huge upgrade from the Speed 9 Premium. Uh, I mean, just look at what it says on the box. Missile, 100%, boom. Shoe, very good. You know, that's what we like to see on the second version of a shoe, tech upgrade. The Speed 9 Premium is supposed to have boom in the forefoot, but the responsiveness up front, I didn't really feel it to be honest. And overall, that shoe can be a little stiff. But on the Ultra, cushioning saw some major improvement, and it was very noticeable on feet. You can really feel that full length, consistent support underneath uh, throughout the shoe from front to back. Transition is extremely fluent. Uh, when you're doing like hard twists and turns on the court, the extensive outrigger part really helps to um, not only make sure your feet don't hurt, but also lower it down to sit closely to the floor. They're still pretty light. Traction performance is the exact same, still very good. It's a really loud and squeaky also, and picks up a minimal amount of dust. Another change is around the collar area. Uh, this time it features like a salt collar. It makes the shoe a little bit harder to put on, and a slightly tighter fit as well. But this collar is very stretchy, and gives you a nice lockdown. The toe box fit is not as spacious as the Speed 9 Premium. So for most people, I would strongly recommend going up a half size in these, from your true size in US sizing. For me, the half size up is still pretty snug, especially if you like to wear thicker socks. Overall, they really came as advertised. All about speed, good for faster movements, and the ultra title is no gimmick. Cushion really got beefed up compared to the Speed 9 Premium. Next shoe, another one that I've never talked about before, and that is the CJ2. Uh, this is the second signature shoe of CJ McCollum, in case you're wondering. These have been out for a while now. Uh, from the reviews that I've seen, it really hasn't been the best. I think there were a lot of concerns about the grip. However, right out of the box, I knew that also on this particular colorway that I have is going to be very grippy. Because you can hear like small sounds of the rubber squeaking uh, just in hand. Turns out it does give you a very good stop most of the times. Dust pickup, however, is a problem because unlike the Speed 9 Ultra, this also is kind of a dust magnet. So if you don't wipe very frequently, it might affect the performance. They're right around average weight. I went half size up. It fits me pretty well, but there is a little bit of heel slippage at the back. So I think you can go true to size. Half size up is if you have wider feet or prefer more room inside. The cushioning and comfort of the CJ2 are for sure top notch. I really felt like I was stepping on cloud. They use a combination of boom and light foam. Boom is full length and light foam is to wrap around the heel basically. As to how they actually support your movements, it's responsive on both the front and back end. A good amount of compression in the heel. It might not look like it because of the occasion, but it's actually very soft and comfortable. And with that nice curve shape on the also, the shoe transitions well too. The materials are nice and cozy. Um, this Valentine's Day colorway, I really didn't like these white speckles on the missile, but performance is up there. If I could only use one word to describe the way it feels, uh, soft. It bends really easily, but there's enough cajun and support for impact protection. So somehow this shoe really reminds me of the McCollum PE in the Sonic 7, uh, which also molds to your feet very nicely. Uh, the CJ2 is just too pricey. Uh, like I said, be aware of heel slippage and dust pickup that might not give you a consistent grip. But from my experience, the traction has worked totally fine so far. The other signature shoe here, I have done a separate video on them recently, so I'll keep it short. Um, that is the JB1, Jimmy Butler's first signature shoe. Like the CJ2, their original retail price is expensive. 
like over $200 USD. That to me is unreasonable. You can either go true to size or half size up. Here, I'll just summarize the main concerns of the JB1 for you to consider. Lateral containment was not very good. My feet felt a little unstable inside. Traction on a dusty cord is also just average at best, and it's pretty hard to wipe off the dust accumulated on the outsole. The tongue, even though it's well padded with this cushion pod, I didn't like how it always flaps against my ankle when I was playing in them, uh, but that's a tiny issue. On the bright side, they're low to the ground, easy to break in, and still a really smooth ride in general. I can see that these might have started to be on a lot of people's radar again, given Miami's crazy playoff run as an underdog. <clears throat> but those are just my honest thoughts from playing in the JB1. Moving on, let's quickly talk about one of my go-to shoes right now, the Leland 3 V2. Uh, just to clarify, it is usually translated as the sharp edge, uh, so I guess we can call it that too. Simply put, I don't think I can find any notable weakness on the shoe. Like the boom fiber materials are sturdy, but also pretty cozy on feet. Traction is absolutely fantastic. They use tough rubber on it too, so it's durable. Cushion, you already know how you just can't go wrong with full length boom. And for sizing, I would recommend going true to size. So whatever you normally wear in most Nike sneakers, let's say. I really like all these colorways that they put out on the Sharp Edge series too. Simple but clean. They look nice on the court. Last but definitely not least is a shoe that I've been asked maybe the most about recently. Um, that is the Sonic 11. And they are actually crazy good. The biggest highlights on these, I think it's gotta be the core feel and transition, in addition to the nice underfoot cushion. First of all, going half size up is a very ideal fit for me, both lens-wise and width-wise. No hill slippage. The traction is excellent too, and you'll have no problems getting to a hard stop. Ventilation is very good on this cool shell upper. The tongue is huge and always falls loose, but even when it flaps around like that, it didn't really bother my movements because it's very thin and soft. The laces are just like the All City 11 with that weird underwear texture, but it has no effect on the functionality or lockdown. And back to the best part, I mean, if you just look at the shape of the also, big curvature, but it's a very steady and low to the ground core feel at the same time. There should be like no pause in your movements in any direction. And it is a pretty bottom heavy shoe, about average weight, but much of the weight is distributed towards the midsole and it spreads out evenly. So you have good standing balance. I do have some prior experience with the Sonic line. And I gotta say, they've come a long way from like the Sonic 6 to now making a model like this with such good comfort while reducing the weight, increasing the airflow, and better traction too, which is really the basic of a shoe's performance. So yeah, Sonic 11, absolutely fantastic to hoop in. I really like how this green colorway turned out. Some call it an avocado colorway, but it's really meant to represent one of the Chinese solar terms in the spring season. Looking at these five shoes together, uh, if I was to pick the best one here, um, like considering all the factors, including traction, cushioning, fit, and materials, I'd probably go with the Legion 3 V2. Um, Sonic 11 is also great. Very versatile performance for different needs. Speed 9 Ultra was a big surprise in how they turned out. If you already enjoy playing in the Speed 9 Premium, I would for sure consider the Ultra to be an upgrade. Ironically, the two signature shoes I'd probably place at fourth and fifth here, but they're still really good. The CJ2 is super comfy with the cushion underneath and transitions so smoothly, while the JB1 is a good low to the ground option if you like a low top with good stepping comfort. To give you a reference, if I was to throw these on a tier list, I would probably put the Leland 3 and Sonic 11 at S tier, uh, being the best of the best. The other three are A tier as well. Like they really are all good shoes. Maybe the JB1 is a borderline A tier or just B tier shoe, given its problems that we talked about based on my experience. So that concludes it for the Li Ning edition of this compilation or hodgepodge of five shoes together. I really hope you enjoyed it or found it a little helpful, especially if you are considering getting any of these. Li Ning and Wave of Wade has been killing it over the past two to three years with their performance models. I know a lot of you really wish Kyrie had signed with them too, but he went with Anta, it seems like. Also, I heard their designer quit and went to Anta. It'll be interesting, we'll see, but the competition is definitely getting more fierce between Chinese brands. And to me, that can only be a good thing for us as consumers. 
Let me know what you think about any of these shoes down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.